Hello everyone, and welcome to another Electric Playthrough. My name's Rob, and today I'm going to be playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Hyperstone Heist for Sega Genesis. My favorite turtle has always been Donatello. I'm going to go with that. Now I'm not a professional gamer or a speedrunner of any kind, I just uh, love this game. And I, I feel like it's kind of an underrated, often overlooked gem, so I thought I'd do a playthrough and a little commentary on it. Basically, Shredder uses the power of the Hyperstones to shrink Manhattan and steals it. So, the turtles are having none of that. So, you're going to see me do a lot of dashing and slamming. Now, uh, it's, it's hard to not compare this game to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, Turtles in Time, for the Super Nintendo, and in a lot of ways they're very similar. Uh, in fact, I think Turtles in Time is a better game, but uh, there's certain things about this game that I think make it, a, make it uh, a little bit more accessible, and actually I think it's a lot easier than Turtles in Time. Uh, first of all, there's only five levels, as opposed to, I believe, Turtles in Time has ten. Uh, and another thing with this game is, watch the way I dash into an enemy, and then I hit the attack button. I, I'm like halfway inside them when I hit them, which puts me in perfect uh, range to start slamming them by spamming the attack button. And in Turtles in Time, you don't really have that. I'm not exactly sure how to trigger the slamming animation in Turtles in Time, but in this game, it's considerably easier and is a one-hit kill on all... Um, foot soldiers. And the controls in this game I think are slightly better as opposed to the Super Nintendo version because the Super Nintendo only uses two buttons. This game uses all three of the Sega Genesis buttons. There's your attack button, your jump button, and then your dash button. To dash in Turtles in Time you have to actually double tap forward or uh, depending on what setting you put it on hold forward and he'll run automatically. I don't know why they couldn't give him a run button, but uh, that's one thing that I like a lot more in this game. So you have your your standard attack and your combo. You hit a few times, one, two, three, four, and he spins it. Or, oh, come on. Or you can run uh, and then hit the jump button to start flipping, and then you can go into a slide like that. You also have your standard jump attack. If you tap jump and then tap attack, you do this kind of diagonal kick. If you hold jump all the way to the top and then uh, start attacking, then you get this like flutter animation that kind of slows your descent. You also have, um, what else you have? You have your super attack, which is from hitting attack and jump at the same time. The problem is, is it uses health to use it. I rarely use it, but that's what it is. Uh, there's a pizza right here. If there's a pizza nearby, you can go ahead and use it because pizzas refill your health all the way. Like so, But my, my go-to attack against these guys is the slam. Also, Turtles in Time has... Uh, they, they take advantage of the Mode 7 chip in the Super Nintendo, and you can throw enemies at the screen. That is completely absent in this game. So, you got to rely on slamming and smacking and all kinds of things, no throwing. There's also other little um, nuanced, neat little things, you know, like enemies will jump over fences in Turtles in Time. This game doesn't have that. Uh, also, the different Foot Clan soldiers do different things depending on what color outfits they're wearing. And it's different between this and Turtles in Time. So... That takes a little bit of getting used to. But anyways, now that we've gotten through all that, this game came out um, when I was huge into Ninja Turtles. I think it came out in 92, which was, uh, and actually a few months after Turtles in Time came out. I was a huge Turtles in Time fan. I would play at um, in uh, Chuck E. Cheese, the Ninja Turtles arcade, and then later Turtles in Time would come out. And then when Turtles of Time came out on the Super Nintendo, of course I bought it and I loved it. 
And then this came out on Sega Genesis, and I never even heard about it until I was an adult. Which is insane considering how big of a turtle fan I was and still am. Donatello's always been my favorite, you know, so he does machines. Oh yeah, and also if you hit attack on your way up, you'll do this weird up kick. I don't know. Oof, watch out for that. And I try not to grab the pizza until I absolutely have to, if I have the health. You know, I, I uh, will clear the screen of all the enemies, just in case I take extra damage. But yeah, uh, getting to come back and play a Turtles game that I never played as a kid, it's, it's really nice. It's almost like a, a brand new game for me. You know, watching the cartoon, and especially the movies, like the old 90s movies, man, they were so good, especially the first two. I mean, when I was a kid, the second one was my favorite, Secret of the Ooze, but as an adult, I realized the first one was just, it's just a great movie overall. I believe there was some pressure from the studio with the second one to make it more like the TV show, but somebody in charge didn't like Bebop and Rocksteady, so they didn't make it in. Instead, we got Toka and Razor. I don't know. It makes for a really different movie from the first one. Of course, Ninja Rap. And I don't know if you noticed, but my score at the top, when I got to 100, I got a free one up. So uh, I don't think that's necessarily every 100 you get it, but it's... I don't know, you get one-ups sometimes when you make it to uh, you like 100 and 300 and 500 maybe. Not exactly sure, but I've gotten to the point now. I haven't gotten a no-death run in this game yet, but um, I definitely don't need more than one or two lives normally. But the way this game is, and especially Turtles in Time, is really easy to get overwhelmed by enemies and they'll hit you with cheap shots that you're not expecting. You know, you'll be busy fighting one guy or, you know. Now for this part right here, the pizza monsters, if you just hang out at the top of the screen in this first level, they'll, they won't they will hit you at all. You can attack them, but I find it's safer to just avoid them. So once again, come up to the top and just hang out. I like to stand in the spotlight. Just wait. There you go. Yeah, look at that. That that shoulder dash will put you right into the proper range to grab them just by being the attack button. And then any enemies you hit will oh, will be one hit from death. See how those do well, they were already hurt, but. And just one simple hit will take them out. Alright, we got Leatherhead. Now the bosses in this game all have pretty simple patterns. The game can be pretty tough if you don't learn their patterns. So for him it's one, two, three, four. He scurries across the ground and then throws some knives. Jump over. One, two, three, four. Pretty simple. And I believe it's the same pattern in Turtles in Time, although I think in Turtles in Time barrels might be dropping from the the ceiling too. I'm not really sure. It's been a while. But um, pretty pretty simple boss. Especially like his death animation, which you'll see here in a second. Also, the more health you have once you finish a level, uh, all those count as points that can be put towards lives. So it's important to keep your health up as much as possible. There we go. Thriller dance. And then he explodes for some reason. Yeah, another thing that Turtles in Time has over this game is the the music and the sound effects are so much better in Turtles in Time. Not that they're bad in this game, but once you've played one, it's hard to go to the other, sound-wise. Gameplay-wise, they're both really solid. Anyway, so this is basically just a place for you to get some extra points. It's good to stay at this point of the screen, because it gives you a chance to jump over the yellow guy's things and to dodge the blue guy's whose attack you haven't seen yet, but 
uh, they lunge at you. They kind of vault with their sword. And so this is a good place to be able to kind of this one third across the screen. And these question mark pizza boxes also give you points. Yeah. See, he was about to lunge at me. Oh. We got mousers. They start coming from both angles here in a second. It's a little bit easier to just jump over them sometimes. There you go. Two, three. One more. There you go, that's your auto-scroller. Not as good as some of the auto-scrolling in Turtles in Time, again. You know, I hate to keep comparing the two. Turtles in Time, you fight a boss battle in the beginning on your board, and then later on there's one using the Mode 7 where it, you're flying towards the horizon, you know, like from a, a behind angle, and it looks really cool. Almost like F-Zero kind of style. But uh, without that Mode 7 chip, the Genesis couldn't quite pull that off. Come on. There we go. Yeah, so we got this mysterious pirate ship. I kind of wonder if this pirate ship was somehow connected to the pirate ship you go to in Turtles in Time. You know, like... Rocksteady brings it back from the past or something. I don't know. It's a pizza. Now, these purple guys in Turtles in Time are your standard grunts who just try and punch you and don't really have any special moves. In this one, they throw shurikens. So, you need to take them out quickly. It's very, very annoying to be fighting one guy and then have a shuriken. Yep, see, there you go. Also, if you see those little... Um, there's three little, I don't even know what they are, right there in front of me here, in front of me here, and in front of me here. If you step on those, the board will jump up and hit you in the face and do damage. So, you got to avoid those while fighting. And another thing to keep in mind is when you're doing your back and forth slam, your turtle is completely invincible. So, a lot of times that can get you out of a situation where an enemy is attacking you. You know, like a shuriken throw or something. If you're slamming an enemy around, you don't have to worry about it. There we go. Now these guys, the nunchuck guys, they attack kind of quickly and have pretty good range. So you want to take them out as quick as possible. Yeah, um, like I said, I chose Donatello. He's always been my favorite turtle, and in the games he has the longest range with his attacks, which I really like, especially for clearing out crowds whenever you're playing by yourself. Co-op in these games are awesome, but when you're by yourself, you need that extra range. Uh, they all have different attributes, like Raphael's the fastest. Uh, I think Michelangelo might be one of the strong... I'm not really sure, but anyways. These... Oh, come on. These guys are really tough. You want to take them out as quick as you can. As long as you keep juggling them, you shouldn't have a problem. Some of them have guns. There you go. I say there's only five levels, which there are, but they're kind of broken up into sub-levels, which makes them um, seem like you're playing multiple levels. You know, like we've already gone through the... Level two so far has been that auto-scrolling on the, the surfboard things and then the pirate ship, and now we're in a cave. So it's almost three parts. I believe the levels are longer in this game than they are in Turtles in Time, even if there aren't as many of them. I actually like the way the turtles look in this one too. They, it, I don't know that they really have more detail, but the colors are kind of, I don't want to say too vibrant in Turtles in Time, but I just think the shading the character models looks a little better, although the backgrounds don't look nearly as good. Like this cave, while it's fine, it's kind of boring. It's like this gray, green, brown color. I don't even know what it is. Ugh. See what I mean about the shurikens? Got a 
can watch the ceiling. See above it, up at the top, that uh, stalactite that's a little bit different colored. That's how you know it's going to fall on you. See, these guys have these little shields, but a one, two, three, four, or a dash attack into a um, slam attack will get through those defenses. Just don't give those guys a chance to attack. They do a lot of damage, and if you stay on them, you won't have to worry about it. Ugh. That's alright, this level actually gives you another pizza during the final boss. Um, or during the boss of this level. Really, I think the boss of this level is the... I don't know if it's the easiest boss. It was kind of the hardest... well, not the hardest to learn, but... Uh, once I figured him out, he became so easy. Good old Rocksteady. All you gotta do... Wait for him to finish speaking super slowly. Jump. One, two, three, four. Step. Jump. One, two, three, four. Step. Jump. So you want to walk towards the left so that way you can attack immediately. Otherwise, he will pull out a gun. If you just keep doing this. Don't jump immediately. Give it give it a couple seconds or a second or so. Oh. So I'll go ahead and grab that now since he's almost dead. See, there's his gun, but... You know. Even that's easy to avoid. Just don't stand in front of him. And then he does a little dance, too. Chicken dance. When I see you next time, I'll beat you. I believe he's referencing to uh, the boss rush level coming up uh, in level four, I believe. Shredder's hideout. Level slow, or the game slowly gets more difficult, um, but it's really not. I mean, I've heard people say that Turtles in Time is easier than this game. I don't know what they're talking about. This game is not very difficult. I mean, I'm playing on normal, but I've beaten it on hard uh, without using a continue. Um, Turtles in Time on normal, I have trouble by myself, mostly because uh, I can't rely on my. My, my slamming attack as much, which is like my bread and butter in this game. Ugh. Stupid robots. When I was a kid, those things scared me for some reason. I don't know, playing the Turtles Arcade, for some reason I always thought of them as being really difficult enemies, and when they showed up, it was getting real serious, but... They do do a lot of damage. These guys only take one hit, but... They do a lot of damage, but they're easy enough to avoid. Now this guy's going to pop out of the ground. You can knock that back and it's a one-hit kill. As long as you don't mess up the timing, because it does pretty decent damage. Watch out for the fire. I don't know how much damage that does. I've never been hit by it, but... Another guy out of the ground. And don't fall in those holes. See how they were hit by that other guy, so just one hit now. Come on. There you go. Yeah, the sound design isn't nearly as good in this game. It sounds kind of... Like when an enemy dies, it sounds like somebody hitting a metal trash can. You know, that, like, boom sound. Yeah. Kind of gets old after a while. Oh, then we got Mousers. Which, when I was a kid, I wanted Mousers to show up in the movies so badly, but it never happened. third Turtles movie from the 90s was not the best. Even as a kid, I didn't think it lived up to the others. I mean, no ninja rap? Come on. Alright, next part of this level. This is where it starts getting a little bit more difficult. Um, this is normally somewhere in this level is where I would lose lives initially. And this part, you can't jump. They put these uh, spikes above you, and if you jump, you take damage. 
and these guys like to throw shurikens at you so you can't jump over them so you just want to take them out as soon as possible and you're through it this part while not difficult you can just get knocked around get thrown on top of the spikes by the enemy and then the spikes throw you back into the enemy and, and they're throwing these stupid things oh see what i mean oh there we go There we go, and we can move on. And then more of these dudes. Try to maximize the number of guys you kill with this. More fire guys and sword guys. Once again, the sword guys, you want to take them out as soon as possible because their vaulting attack, while it can be interrupted as they're flying through the air, um, it's fast, so it's easy to accidentally take damage from it. Like, Mousers are so frustrating because their hitboxes are so small and they and they do that stupid move where they grab a hold of your hand. There we go. All right, I try and trigger all the enemies before I go all the way to the left here. Because once you get in position, which I think is about to happen, these things start shooting lasers. And it's real easy to die in this part. Oh. There we go. Wow. There we go. This is, uh, we're almost done with this portion of level three. It'll be almost time for the boss battle. This boss was pretty tough to learn because his pattern is kind of unusual, but I'll show you an easy way to take care of him. Uh, he has infinitely spawning foot soldiers, but they only spawn if you kill all of them. So if you leave one alive, or you can just kind of ignore them altogether, which is pretty much what I'll do. So yeah, he says you have to defeat his soldiers before you fight him, but you don't have to. Jump up to the top of the screen, run, and dash into him. Hit him four times, and then jump to the bottom. Two, three, four, and then jump to the top. And you just make this little this little rectangle uh, shape with your your attacks. Now, I think you can hit his dart backs ba darts back at him, but uh, I'm I'm not gonna figure that out. I figured out this pattern. If you just keep moving the foot won't really be a problem he can't really hit you I think this is the end for him right here two three yep there we go and he cries out to his master in vain explosion there's a shredder statue with like ten arms and then you find the hidden entrance. There you go, 500 points. Let's get up to my fifth life. The Gauntlet. All right, this is the um, boss rush part of the game. Now this one, there's not, as far as I've found, there isn't really a place you can just stand to avoid all the pizza monsters, but you just move around. They're not hard to avoid. Like I said, you can attack them and kill them, but there's no need to risk taking damage. Just keep moving. So you're like, once again, we're in that, it looks like the same exact cave. They just made it blue. And like the ground is supposed to be water, but I'm like walking on top of it. So it's just graphical things like that in this game that make it seem not quite as in depth as Turtles in Time. It's like the water's obviously deep enough for these monsters to swim in, but so shallow that they don't even, doesn't even cover my feet, I guess? I don't know. 
Let you just suspend your disbelief and get ready for the boss rush. And if you mastered the patterns that I taught you before, you should have no problem. Now there is uh, some differences with the bosses. I'm not sure what the difference is with Leatherhead. Uh, but Rocksteady, if given the opportunity, will pull out grenades and throw them, which I don't believe he will. He did in the first fight against him. And then Tatsu, the guy that we fought as the boss before this one, um, even if you... Um, I was saying that you can leave one foot soldier alive and no more will spawn. Well, that's not the case in this fight. When you fight them this time, they will spawn as you kill them. So I guess that makes it more difficult. But once again, for all the bosses, just use the exact same strategy. As you had before. Also, they're all different colors. Not really sure why. Maybe they're clones. There we go. Got another thriller dance, and it's time for Rock Steady. See, I'm just not even letting him use his gun or his grenades. Let's do the four. Jump over. I mean, Turtles in Time, I don't know that there's any bosses that I've been able to fight that I get away with taking no damage. But here I just fought two bosses in a row and they didn't even touch me, so. Chicken dance. Explosion. Oh, there it is. And then Tetsu. You know, you start at the top because he didn't stop to talk to you this time. So just start at the top. There we go. Do your little rectangle. And I just ignore the foot. I mean, typically they're not going to be able to do anything to you anyways. They might grab you for a second. But, and it's also tempting to chase Tatsu straight back across with him, but he drops all those darts from above. You don't want to get caught up in that. You kind of want to do your dash attack just before you get to oh come on before you get to the wall so that way you're kind of inside his sprite do it too early or in range from hit you with dart you don't want that all right now for a new boss we have Baxter Stockman so this game came out after Turtles in Time but uh, Stockman is still a human in it, so I guess maybe this takes place before Turtles in Time, because in that one, he's already had his mutation to the f giant fly monster thing that he becomes. Now, every time you hit him, he drops a mouser, or just he drops mousers sometimes. So you just jump and make like an X. You try and land on the mousers with your kick, Otherwise, they'll keep spawning and they'll just overwhelm you and you'll take some damage trying to clear them out. Sometimes I'm able to kill him no problem and other times I get all just caught up in his mousers and all kinds of nonsense. There we go. Always feels like his last, his last um, health box takes forever. There we go. That's enough of Baxter Stockman. The gauntlet is clear. 
And the final stage, you get this cinematic, which is very similar to the cinematic in Turtles in Time, when you find the Technodrome. Although, it doesn't look quite as good. Yeah. Shredder. He's got the Hyperstones. Hyperstone? I don't know. The final shell shock. Alright. Now, Technodrome. While it's not too difficult, it's easy to lose some lives here. But once again, if you just keep... Keep um, aggressively attacking foot soldiers you should be fine and clear out mousers quickly you don't want them to be able to attack you want to get them just wiped out see what I mean Ugh, so annoying don't give them the chance to gang up on you or get scattered on either side of you these things definitely kill those things quickly on hard mode they attack much faster so you kind of have to jump around but in normal mode you can just kind of attack them as they circle around you there we go took out all of them worked out Ugh, so they like catch you in these electricity rings Ugh. There we go. Don't normally have that much trouble with them, but see how how things can get away from you really easily. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Especially with mousers and various robotic creatures for some reason. Maybe because they tend to swarm. Yeah, this, I mean, now that I think about it, like, I've always played Ninja Turtles games, you know, I, I have, I have all the NES Turtles, Super Nintendo one, this one, uh, all the Game Boy Ninja Turtle games, and they're all varying degrees of difficulty and, and uh, quality, but uh, they're all pretty good. After this game, I don't know that they made another good Ninja Turtle game, I mean... I played one on the GameCube that was based on the that TV show remake that they did where like I think Shredder was revealed to be some kind of an alien or something. I don't know. The game was fine, but it was super repetitive. And then I have one for PlayStation 4 that's not that great. I don't know. This was kind of the last great Turtles game in my opinion. Okay, so once you get to this big open area, there's going to be these freezy things that come up. And what I do is I just go up to the top and walk while spamming my attack button. Until I get to the first one. There it is. And then you can walk a little bit and get ready for the next one. Because they will freeze you in place and do damage and it's super annoying. Just don't go down, just stay right up here. Right, all the foot, and then there it is. One more, and then you're good. Just uh, still be careful though, because you have to fight these guys, and I think there's some more on the floor down below where I am now. So just stay up here. Ugh. God. I'm like never able to make it over those things, so make sure you have health, because I don't, I don't, I just get hit by those things all the time. I don't know what Shredder's doing here in the Technodrome. There's like skeletons in those tubes back there. It's terrifying. Maybe they're making Foot Clan soldiers. I don't know. Oops, didn't mean to do my super attack. But hey, I got past them. If you're quick enough, I guess you could uh, set up a slam attack as those, those 
big balls are rolling by and maybe get uh, the invincibility frames to save you. But who knows? I think there's some, yep, rock monsters. Just take them out, especially the ones with the guns. And then others will immediately run back in, so. That's it. Come on. Yeah. Got there in time. All right. Now, this is another tough place, and it's, it's really easy to get killed here. Luckily, I have enough lives, but this is pretty much the last little part before um, the next boss fight. Watch out. Yeah, they have a long range with their nunchuck things. You can get knocked into the electricity. All right, did it. Wow. Unfortunately, now I have to fight Krang with no health, but that's fine. I have plenty of lives. Now, Krang doesn't really have the best um, pattern like the others to just kind of exploit. You do actually have to kind of pay attention to what he's doing and attack accordingly. When he's laughing is a good time to attack him, but also watch out because he does this stupid two-handed attack if you're too close to him. It's part of the reason why I like Donatello is for this fight. One, two, three rockets. Watch out for that kick. Yeah, Donatello's got the range. Three, laughter. See, he tried to hit me with those two hands. It's like the most annoying attack in this whole game. Like when I beat this game as Raphael, he has really short range. And man, I got hit by that attack many times. Yeah, so just kind of do how I'm doing. Just pay attention to where he's going. And, um, ooh, and then kind of figure out your own attack pattern. Two, three. He has one other attack where he shoots a bunch of explosives into the sky. He doesn't do it every time I fight him. Uh, and it's pretty tough to avoid sometimes. Oh, yep. I just took a donkey punch in the back of the head. It's alright. It's only one life down. Two, three. Kind of want him to do that aerial attack just so you can see it. Oh, here he goes. And just watch for shadows. Ugh. Yeah, see what I mean? Annoying. Almost done. I'm not sure if they follow you, because some of them seem to, but then other times it seems random. I don't know. Ugh. Yikes. See? Man, he hits you with that, and it takes up a lot of health. Man. Wow. Wow, I've never died twice to Krang before, but that's fine. There he is. He's dead. And his big, gross, naked baby costume explodes. No, oh, you don't get to see him. But Krang flies away. And then it's time for one of these famous Konami elevator battles. They did it in this, and they did it in the Simpsons Arcade, and Turtles in Time. Lots of spawning enemies on elevators. Just be ready for these yellow guys to throw the things down at you. And watch out for these guys to do their dash attacks. I'm saving that pizza in case I need it. Or right before I fight Shredder. Because this is the last pizza of the game. Mm. 
you got robots. What you can kind of do here, because there's a wall, you can kind of trap them. Trap them against the wall and just keep... Ugh. There we go. Easy peasy. Yeah, so I just keep saving that pizza. It's mousers? Yeah, mousers. There you go. Another big problem with these games is both this and uh, the arcade game for uh, original Nintendo and Manhattan Project for original Nintendo and Turtles in Time is there's no four player co op. Even if you have a multi tap, it doesn't let you do it. Which is a real shame, considering how um, the co-op is already so good, and if there were four players, man, would it be awesome. Now they just start glooping into existence like the T-1000. Uh oh. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that pizza. I think this is the last wave of enemies. Yep, that'll do it. Now Shredder, or I guess I should say Super Shredder, looks very menacing. He is incredibly easy. On hard mode, he's very fast, and so there is some challenge there. But in this, right in normal, it's it's insanely easy. Just get out of his way for the fire, run across, drop down, run across, go up. You want to attack, so you don't do. We'll do green, red, and then blue fire. And you're waiting for the blue fire. Just sprint across and move to the other side of the screen. See the blue? So the fire will burn you, the green will turn you into a regular turtle, and the blue he just fires harmlessly over your head. So, I mean maybe you can damage him from behind whenever he's using the other color fires, but it's not worth the risk, I've never tried, I don't know. But um, it's rare that Shredder even ever gets a hit off on me. It's incredibly easy. It's kind of a shame. One time I had him do the blue fire like 10 times in a row. It was insane. I killed him so fast. And sometimes he, uh, it seems like he's just never using, it's just fire, 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 green fire, green fire. It's over and over again. So there's a lot of randomness with this fight, but as long as you just keep moving, you shouldn't have any problems. I guess Shredder being easy is kind of in keeping with uh, tradition. Him and the, uh, if you watched my original Ninja Turtles video I did for the NES, the Shredder fight, once again, you fight him, he doesn't even hit you if you do it right. You know what you're doing. Shredder is a pushover. Right, it's just about done. There he goes. Cowabunga. It's also a shame that the original Ninja Turtles arcade never got a Super Nintendo port. I mean, it got an NES port, but yeah, see, he drops three Hyperstones, but then he talks about having one. I don't know. And Splinter is just hanging out in broad daylight at Liberty Island. April O'Neil looking as beautiful as she did when I was a kid. I watch right next to Splinter here in a second. This dude, like, really excited to be on TV, I guess. Uh, 
shrouded in mystery. This has been April O'Neil reporting. Now watch down by Splinter. Yay! <laughs> All right. Then you get this awesome animation. If you beat it on hard mode, you get a little uh, after the credits a um, kind of like a cast of characters art gallery, which is pretty cool. But you know, I, I didn't bother to beat this on hard mode. And maybe I'll do a Turtles in Time playthrough soon, or you know, Manhattan Project, or something like that. But this was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: The Hyperstone Heist for Sega Genesis. Thanks for watching.